Good morning. It's Beth at Paris House Wool Works, and um, yeah, it's Wyeth too. <laughs> I wanted to follow up the um, bee installation video that I did uh, just last week, late last week, um, because there were certain things that I couldn't show you in that video. And it was because I was working alone to do the installation and, um, you know, you can't hold a camera and do certain things at the same time. So I did show you the queen in her queen cage. And um, last night I went out to remove the queen cages um, because, as I explained in the installation video, the worker bees will actually chew through the candy that's at the end of the queen cage and release her and her time in the cage gives um, the colony time to accept her as their queen uh, because if she's not accepted and she's loose in the hive um, they can actually kill her so that's something we don't want to happen um, and so I thought I would show you uh, one of the queen cages that I removed last night you can kind of see that um, if I get really close hopefully it shows um, they did chew through the candy end and when I went to take these out of the hives last night I could see very clearly that the queen was not in them and so it was safe to remove them and I did this very quickly because at this stage of the game I don't really like to disturb the hive too much um, you may also remember that I had um, one frame out this year and one of the reasons I don't usually do that I don't like to do that I like to just leave enough room for the queen cage in between um, two of the frames when I have them all in the hive is because they will build what's called brace comb in any spaces that are larger than what we call bee space so I had a frame out of each hive and um, as a result, see, wife wants to talk to you too. <laughs> anyway, as a result of my having the, the frames out to give me a little more space for this queen cage, they did start building brace comb, and it was only a few days. So I'll show you what that looks like. Um, here's a beautiful new piece of comb that they had started to build in the excess space um, within the hive. And uh, this never ceases to amaze me, really. I have it out. I removed it because it, it, it was in excess, and, and I want the comb uh, on the frames, not being built between the frames or in random places in the hive. Um, but this, this is a beautiful example of freshly made comb. And I'll turn it over. You can see with the light through it that... Um, they're actually staggered, uh, which is really interesting. But anyway, um, this is a beautiful piece of comb. Removed that from the hive last night, and um, and and that that's what you do with the with the excess comb. So the other thing I was unable to show you was um, what my my feeders look like. Um, this is a new colony forage has just come out. So uh, I'm probably going to remove the feeders pretty soon, but they're just as simple. Hang on. <laughs> yeah. They're just as simple as um, a jar, a ball jar. And then on the top, there's a lid with tiny little holes punched in it. And this gets turned upside down on top of the inner cover um, and the frames. And... Um, that allows them to take the tiny droplets of uh, sugar water, it's one to one ratio sugar to water uh, mixed, um, to feed on and really get their colony established um, while we're waiting for the full spring forage to come in here in Maine. So that's it. I just wanted to show you those things. And um, one of the reasons why it is so needy is because he hasn't been taken out yet this morning. <laughs> so we're going to go for our walk next. And um, thanks for watching.